Welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Lacey and I own Milky Candles. Today I've got lots to do. I need to fill candles, I need to put labels on some candles, I need to take vessels out of molds, I need to paint the inside of the candles to like seal them. There's a lot, there's a lot I gotta do today. I also need to sit down and start figuring out what my fall budget is gonna look like for my fall launch and I'm just gonna take you along with me. I recently got an order that was somewhere around 500 candles and somebody had reached out to me through Etsy and they wanted to find a queer owned company to actually gift all of their employees a candle from me. That almost felt unreal. I was like, there's, there's no way. There's no way. Me? Little old me? I'll now talk about that more in detail. I think I have a video planned actually just about you know what happened and how it looked and how did I handle it and all that kind of stuff. The amount of candles, is that a crack? No. The amount of concrete that I've mixed, the amount of vessels that I have created, the amount of candles that I am filling and still filling, the amount of labels that I have printed, it's just been like the center of my universe and it's felt great. So this will be kind of log style and yeah, let's get into it because we've got a lot to do. I need to prep my space and make it smell good. Okay, this is where I do all of my cement pouring. Um, I've had multiple different spaces and this is the one that feels the most out of the way. I'm gonna take all of my warning labels and just pop one on each of the bottom of these before I even take them out. Sometimes they're even, most times they're not. This is not how even the warning label is at the bottom. It's not a hill I choose to die on. Maybe one day, but not today. Also, if you peep my disgusting nails throughout this video, please don't judge me because they are dyed um, with cement. Cause sometimes like a chunk will fall in and I'll just like bloop, go in and grab it. And also I just get down and dirty with my cement. Clearly. Okay, so the way that I get these out is I just unstick it right there enough that you can like kind of feel a little pop. And then I fold this over and I hold it and I fold over the whole top. This takes honestly a lot of practice. My fiance refuses to do it because she's like, I don't know how you get it to stay. And then put you back into it and pop it out. I save the lids for last because they're easier in my opinion, because you literally just, again, pop it out. You can hear that little suction. Beauty. Just beauty. Okay, we're now in the garage where I put the cement vessels when they need to allow the moisture to continue getting out of the vessel before I can even paint slash seal the inside. So it's summer in Arizona. <laughs> this is where they're gonna dry in the garage. Makes total sense, it's nice and warm. However, I need to make some space. So I'm gonna pull some of these inside because these have been out here for a little while, like a couple of days, and um, put them on the table, the I'm ready to be sealed table, and um, we'll put the, the new ones out here. The black can stay, those ones have not been out here for a full 24 hours. And I usually keep them out here for that time or a little longer. So this is the table that needs to have all of these vessels painted. I'm gonna wait to do that because right now I would really prefer to label some of the candles that I already have made so that I can move them off to the side so that I can also have the space readily available for making more candles today while these dry. So I'll label those paint these, let them dry while setting up to make more candles. Okay, so I already have my labels printed because um, I labeled some of these yesterday and I'm getting really sick and tired of the labels that I have. So 
The labels that I currently have are these rounded rectangle ones and I'm actually going to change my labels again. So I'm glad I didn't take the time to stop and re-photograph all my candles with these ones because, I don't know, I, I think this is just really limiting and even though these candles are minimalistic and that's kind of part of the style, I still like the other candle label that I'm going to do more than this. So, besides, anyone can just take off their label. They're, they're peelable. So the ones that are labeled are going to go in this corner. You're going to go over here actually, this feels better. It makes sense for me to move one something from one space to another space and kind of like work in threes or fours or sixes because it just makes me feel, I don't know, like I can see that things are progressing. So I use Avery labels and this is like kind of the first time I'm having an issue with labels. So when they print, um, they're kind of consistently off center, which is really frustrating. And again, I don't have that problem with like other labels that I use, just these very specific ones. And I got these ones that were rounded because I was actually was printing off of these larger squares and then I was hand cutting them with, you know, it's just a quick little utensil that you use to cut, but not a scissors, but you, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, but that was taking a lot of my time and I found that there was a lot of wasted product, a lot of wasted labels. Um, so I made the switch and I'm a little disappointed because they're always off centered. So in order to have them centered, I then have to save it off centered and it, even that works about, mm, I would say 70% of the time, which means that there's a 30% waste of product. And that's not cool because I spend money on that. So I'm trying to um, kind of like go with what I know works. Oh my God, I love this line in the middle of this one. Oh, this is why I love handmade products. Like just not every vessel is the same. I don't like this lid though. So let's swap it out. There we go, I like that one better. Don't judge me, okay? When you look at something for too long, you can see the flaws that other people probably don't see. I still have about 20 more rose water candles that I need to make for this order, but my um, scent is coming in the mail, so it's going to have to wait. And I already have a bunch of them that are already packed up. They're just sitting in the guest room because that's sort of where I'm tracking the inventory for this order. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm sort of tracking it all over the house, but the finished products and the packaged products are sitting in the office. That one was not straight. Uh, another thing about these cement vessels is when I peel off the label, like little bits of loose cement come off. So if I put a label on wrong, I'm not, I'm not reusing it because now it's going to have little bumpies underneath it but I very rarely have to peel a label off. Okay, that's 
straight enough for me. I use the lip here as a guide, um, but it's helpful for me to have the lid on when I put my labels on because it serves as kind of another guide. Like I get to see this straight dark line here, that shadowed line. So that's helpful for me. All right, moving on. This table does not have a lot of space. This needs to go in the dryer at a different time because there's already things in the dryer. my cement vessels or seal them on the inside and I just realized I didn't put on any mascara <laughs> whatever I also didn't do a lot on my face I see a lot of people using the I, I don't really remember what it's called but it's like in this blue tin and it's sold at like your hardware stores and it's supposed to seal the inside. Well, it's supposed to seal things. Like you can use it on wood finishes, you can use it on cement, you can use it on whatever just to like seal whatever it is that you are working on. However, I was doing some research and I found someone who had reached out to that company and asked them if it was safe for candle burning and they recommended that it wasn't safe for candle burning. So I did some more research and I found this place called Earth Safe Finishes. Yeah, I just think and this is definitely a better route for sealing the inside of your cement vessel. So if you're someone who has thought about doing this before or does it a lot, then I would use this over that. Let me go get it. Okay, it's the Minwax water-based polycrylic protective finish. So everyone uses this, do not recommend it. Um, I mean, it works great, it's just that, I, who knows how many brain cells I killed while using this. Not for burning, not for candles. All right, moving on. Um, I need to buy more of this. I just pour it in here so that it's easily accessible because I have a small one. I am actually going to put on some Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and get to painting. Uh, I'll show you how I do this first though. So I normally, so I'll normally just bring a handful over and I'm actually gonna move this over here. So I'll create a line of a couple of these and then I'll move on to the next few. So I use this small brush, it's probably just one inch. And um, I keep it clean by putting it in some like pure acetone nail polish remover in a glass and I'll just like let it sit in there and you'll just sort of see all the paint come off and it ends it comes off in like kind of a goopy way so that's how i keep this clean i do that every now and then because i know that when using paint brushes eventually it just becomes more and more and more stiff nobody cares about that and i don't even know why i'm talking about it i'll take some paint on my brush i take quite a bit and i start off by doing the bottom and then i just go along the sides and I don't know if you actually saw any of that you probably didn't but I explained it and that's just gonna have to suffice sometimes there's little air bubbles um, which creates holes in the cement vessels on the inside and that's totally fine I actually just fill those with this so that when I'm making my candles it doesn't cause a ton of air bubbles I actually pour at a pretty low temperature so that I don't have very many air bubbles anyway. And then sometimes what happens is the sealer will bubble as you're like trying to put it on. So 
just allow it to get kind of tacky and then go over it again and it'll get tacky pretty quickly. Sometimes that happens when there's still moisture in the vessel just a little bit and it's pushing the paint. Sometimes it's just these teeny tiny little holes that um, are in the vessel that maybe you can't see that again are have air pockets and it's again pushing the paint out. So sometimes you'll see those, like there's some down here. And that's it. I'll do another one closer up. Let me get close. I'm personal. All right, so this is what we have. I'm gonna take about that much and I'm gonna do the bottom just like that nice and even and then I just pull it up onto the sides and honestly the hand that cramps the most is the one holding the vessel so sometimes I'm like holding it in different positions. And also I hurt my thumb as of recently by pulling out the cement vessel in an uncomfortable position. But it was fast, but it was uncomfortable. So screwed myself over. Let's get into some full episodes on Bravo TV. Previously on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Veins. I've been driving this train Years in this lane There's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game And I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes Made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks Feeling lost, feeling great Unfinished Never stop Unfinished All the squad here to play And I've got something to say, yeah Okay, I finished painting the dark ones I just have Are you tired, Penny? I have the light ones left and I'm gonna take some ibuprofen again because my thumb is starting to feel a little bit worse. This took me about 35 minutes. How many are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, what's eight times six? 48. It took me about 45 minutes to do, or not the 45, 35 minutes to do 48. So, not bad officially done. I did 127 of them in about 80 minutes. It was like an hour and 20 minutes. So <sighs> feels good. Feels good to have these all done. And over here by my fireplace, we have all of these that are already painted. So it's about time to fill some of these up with vessel. Oh, with vessels, with candles. It's been about an hour. And I'm gonna wipe off my counter because this is gonna be the space where I pour. Uh, first thing I can do with this. And I need to throw this away. So I'll probably make 40 or 60. Yeah, I'll probably make 60 just while I'm already, you know, in the zone. So far I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So far I have 40. I'll do the last 20 once I can clear off some of the space. And what I'm gonna do is prep my wicks with, and then I'm gonna prep my jars with wicks. Five, six, because I think I'm gonna lay like six, each row will have six, so. Then I'll just cut my wicks, um, not like a whole lot. I'm just cutting off most of what's at the top specifically, and I'll go and cut them, you know, to actual size later. But the reason why I do this is because when I have all these vessels lined up in a row, when the wicks are really tall, it's actually hard for me to A, not move the wick that's before the row I'm working on, but B, um, I keep knocking it and I'm, while I'm trying to pour behind it. So I just like my wicks smaller to work with from the very get-go. It's an extra step that you don't need, but I feel it's necessary for me. And then I'm just putting my wick bars. Six done, 34 to go. 
play and I've got something to say, yeah. I work hard each So I have 40 of these ready to go and now I'm going to melt, well, measure then melt my wax. I might do more than 60. Depends on how many I have left to fulfill how many black moss and cedar candles we need for this order. Because I think I might only have like 20 something more to do after that, so I might as well just like bump it up to 80 or 90. We'll see how many candles I make. I like to warm up my pot, so this is what I'll use to pour. For now, I'm not gonna turn it on. I'm just gonna, well, yeah, I will actually, because all I'm gonna need to do is measure the wax. I have the Instapot here. I'll get a paper towel to put my ladle on. We'll put this towel here just to protect the counter and sometimes I'll put the um, pouring pitcher right here and then I have another towel that's already set up right here. As this water heats up, I'm going to measure my wax. So let's go. This is convenient for me to just rip this whole thing open. It just makes cutting so much easier. I like to rip this side too, but I need scissors for the tape. Busted a hole in one glove, so I only have one glove left, and it's for my left hand, but I'm gonna use it for my right, so it's gonna be backwards. Listen, we do what we can. So for now, I'm just gonna make them in batches of 20 candles at a time. So I just measure um, 10 ounces at a time, and if I, I don't turn on my, whatever that name of the contraption is that I now can't remember, but warms up my wax, crock pot, I think is the word I'm looking for, words. I don't turn it on yet because um, I count like the large chunks of these that are in there. So every single large chunk, I'm able to be like, oh yeah, okay, that was one, two, three. I have three of those large chunks, so that means I've got 10 ounces of wax in there. Even, or sorry, 30 ounces of wax in there, so 10 times three. Even though there's all these little pieces, I know that every large piece contributes to 10 ounces. I don't know if that makes sense, that's just how I do it. Every day, I get lost in the words I say. I don't push pause, no, I push play. I won't stop till I make a change. So we're gonna now measure our fragrance oil. I just measure it in a little cup to the side, and we're looking at 12 ounces of the fragrance oil. Probably need to get another bottle. And I've also already turned on the pot, so it is melting fragrance or not. This is starting to melt down, so I'll see you when it's all melted. We are fully melted and at a good temperature, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss in this fragrance oil, mix it for you know, three seconds or so. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my um, Pot. Now I have my pouring pitcher, which is warm. I do like for my wax to cool before I actually pour, but I don't want it to get a weird shock, which can affect the wax from putting it from a hot pot into a cold pitcher. So I just like to make sure my pitcher is warm and then everything can cool at an even rate. I like to let it cool because it actually creates less bubbles, which is really important with cement because there's always like different textures inside of the cement. Again, I mentioned earlier, there might be holes that you can't even see. I'll do one more. Okay, I like to make sure it's not too full because it makes pouring difficult when it's too full. So, just gonna wipe off the sides. Let this cool for a little bit and we'll come back and pour. Time to pour. The napkin here to wipe after every pour. We're gonna go slow and steady because if I hear a vessel crack, I'm gonna freak out. All right, I could have gone a little slower, but we did it. When the pitcher is really full, I like to do the ones that are easy to get and then as it gets, Emptier, I like to do the ones that are harder to get. Like these ones. It's 
see how I'm not getting, there's no wicks in my way. I love that. Kira, quit licking up everything off the floor. So again, we're gonna get these easy ones first. So I dropped my tripod, which had my camera on it, which broke my camera. So won't be able to film from that anymore. My old camera, not my new camera. I'm just gonna fill the rest of the candles that I need to fill and then I will show you when I'm all done. All right, we are officially done for the day. I'm pretty sure I did all of the black moss and cedar candles that I need to have. I totally screwed up this one, so I emptied it out. <laughs> You know, if I'm gonna screw up a vessel, I'm gonna save the wax. But I think I made a couple extra anyway, just in case something like that happens. So I should have enough to cover the whole order. Once these dry, I will blast them with my heat gun over there. But until then, I'm so done. And I'm gonna end there because it's dinner time. My body is at this point starting to ache. And when Atocha comes home, we, what is Kira eating? Nothing. When Atocha comes home, we need to run to Target because we need to get my mom a couple of things for her birthday. And then tomorrow I need to ship out her birthday box. So thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Follow me on Instagram at Milky Candle Company. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.